tactful. Come in, or need I ask? You need not. I uh, want to drop my wrap. You can come in for one drink, no longer. I'm a slow drinker. No. Mm. Mm. Not tonight. Mm. No. Mm. Oh, wait, idiot. The curtains. You do like to take a risk, don't you? I take what I like. Darling. Mm. You're very naughty. Am I? You know what would happen if... If what? If this got out. Who the hell's to know? My maid, for one. Pay her more. <laughs> Yes. Who, who is that? Fumel. <coughs> Inspector Fumel. <coughs> my, my humble apologies, Madame. I'd like to speak to the Chief Inspector. Well, so would I. He hasn't come back yet. Oh, again, my apologies, Madame, for disturbing you. Oh, don't mention it. Past five. Neurotic. Well, there is a pattern. At least we're agreed on that. Well, are we? I don't see it. Oh, tell me, what do you see? Well, you get one hold up, all right, two done by the same gang. Then the boys catch on, they carbon copy it, you get a wave. We've had it before. Not like this, not. Four attacks spread out neatly in a row. St. Cloud in March, Rucayo ten days after that, Poissonnier ten days later. Twelve. And today in the Rue Perrault. Yesterday. Rhythm, mode of attack, choice of victim, always a single cashier. Time of attack, same planning, same thinking, pattern. You got that on the blade, Ben. Well, it's all we've got to go on. Oh, yes, and a 50 franc note from the St. Cloud raid that might have been passed over to bar by any one of three million Parisians. What a haul after five weeks' work. Where's La Pointe? Why didn't he come back with you? I left him in the Rue Maldives somewhere. I'm not his keeper. All right, don't get your feathers up. It's my head they're after, the press and the boys upstairs. Well, after 36 hours on my feet, they can have mine. Feathers and all. Pattern. <laughs> oh, 
Packy. I give it. One hand behind the lot. Who's? Come on, take your choice. We've done this before. Let's do it again. Merci. He's past it. Max Darglon? Mm -hmm. No, be. no, he's dead. So you said. So Interpol said. Interpol said. Well, why are we wasting time with him? Well, now, what about Joseph Bellini? He's just done a ten-year stretch in Saint Martin de Rey. Mm, yes, and came out last December. Could be. If we could find him, Eckerman? No, uh, he's in Mexico. Mm. At least that's the word. I'd like to know who passed the word. La Salle, dog me. Mm. Shall I? Uh, shall I send out for some more coffee, Petal? No, I think we'd all do better to get some sleep. Well, we're still paid to sleep. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's morning. Another day. Another hold up. Ah, uh, Junior, where'd you get lost? I thought I'd have another go at that barman in the Café Mar, the one who brought in that stolen 50-franc note. Did he remember something? Yeah. He's pretty sure now that he got it from an old soldier who sells newspapers. Why well, is he sure? Well, it seems the old fellow always catches his drinks, this one he bought. With this 50-franc note? Yeah. That's sort of stuck in his mind. Some lead. Well, better collect him, though. There goes our sleep. Did he have a name, this old soldier? Nope. He's over 70 and smells. Well, that should be quite simple. Come on, come on. I'll do the same for you someday. Thanks a lot. Well, it was just an idea. No, no, you did very well, that point. Oh, God. Mangre. Jules. Who's that calling? I just need a few mail. Is that you? Excuse me. Yes, it's few mail. <laughs> I could tell by the cough. Hold on a minute. All right, the point. Go and get some sleep. Who knows? You might have earned it. Now, where the devil do you want at 5.30 in the morning? I found a body. Oh, congratulations. Put it on ice and inform Judge Goodhart. It will interest you. You're wrong. Frankly, I'm only interested in bed. The body has no face. What? The face has been destroyed. I'll be along right away. Where are you now? Early morning. <coughs> An hour ago in the Bar de Boulogne. Mm. Two police cyclists found him. Oh. <coughs> oh, is that what killed him? Another injury on the back of the head. Mm. Blood on the ground? None. Mm. Wasn't killed in the bois. Tire marks? Too many. His pockets were empty and the maker's marks taken off. Oh. Somebody didn't want him recognized, him. Eh? A psychopath, would you say? Possibly, but a psychopath is also an amateur. Why? Well, he destroys the face, but he forgets about fingerprints. Good hands. That tattoo mark. Seahorse. I've seen that before somewhere. You know him? I was trying to think. Through cotton wool. Maybe records will help you trace it. I'd help him myself, Aristide, but. Can't release a man, not even myself, because of these hold-ups. Hmm? Ring me if you find anything. Where will you be? Frankly, in bed for the next six hours, I hope. Thank you. It's 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, is it? Seahorse. Seahorse. I've got it. Quende. Honore Quende. God, I've had him in my office a dozen times. Who is he? Oh, well, he's a man we found dead in the bois. He's a thief. Very clever one. Do you know he could go into a bedroom and take a key from under a sleeping man's pillow? <laughs> he never hurt anyone in his life. Why should anyone want to do this to Quende? 
Oh, we're in business. Hello, Maigret. Vettel? Have a good sleep. We got the paper, seller. All right. Get to work on him. I'll be in. Oh, no, Jules. Ah. Oh. Why, why should anyone want to do that to Quinn? Now, listen. I want some sleep. And for the last half hour, you've been hedging. A 50 bank note, brand new. You must remember who gave it to you. I am an honest man. That's right. That's why you're going to tell us. Now, is it any of these? Do I look at the faces? I look at the money. Never mind. This is your big chance. Now, come on. You're going to look at this. Look, was it him? Or him? Uh, or him? Could be. Which one? This? If you say... Was it him? I look at the money. I am an honest oh. man. A soldier Here of we France. we go again. I fought at Verdun. Yes. I fought beside Pétain. Mm. I've got scars. Yes, all here right. Here and here. Oh, this, all right. a yes. boss bandit did to me. This, a grenade. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Ah, Pétain. Etienne Jericho. 70 chasseurs. Soldier of France. Put back his shirt. You've been through these? Yeah. Oh, Inspector Fumel's in your office. Ah, good. All right, sit down. Now, my good soldier of France, how often does a customer pay you with a 50 franc note, huh? You'd have to get change, huh? That would take time, so that you'd get a good look at him. Take him through him again. And again. I am an honest man. And you have scars to prove it. Uh, all right, now, just take your time. Do you want a cigarette? Sit down there, Steed. <laughs> I found the seahorse. That's him. Quendi. That's him. Well done, Aristide. And here's the laboratory report. Ah, good. There are splinters of marble embedded in the skull. Marble? Hmm. Small ornament, hmm? Marble statue, perhaps? On the sleeves, blood. Grains of rice powder and traces of lubricating oil. From the cow, do you think? Yes. On the trousers, white hairs from a cat. Hmm. You know, I remember this man's method, the way he used to work. It's vital that we find out where he was last living. An old mother somewhere in the old Muftar, I think. She might be able to help us. Ah, Judge Gouda. Well, McGregor here found witness at last. Yes, old paper so seller. He? Does he know anything? I doubt it. Then what use is he to you? Well, monsieur, if the gang have started to unload that San Clou money, this is the way it would turn up. In bars, on the streets. Well, hmm. I'd better see him. Monsieur, with your permission, hmm? I don't want him to feel that we're all that interested. If he is part of the gang, I think we might do better to let him go. The first suggestion of a lead of any sort that you've managed to find him five weeks and you want to let him go. With a tail on him, of course, it might lead somewhere. Well, at the moment, we're just floundering in the dark. I don't know, Maigret. No, we. No. All right, I'll leave that to you. Thank you, monsieur. Uh, have you seen this? What is it? It's the report on the men we found dead in the bois. He'd been identified, a known thief, Honoré Quindy. Oh, yes, this is Fumel's case. I've had a copy. One thug obliterating another. We should be very grateful. This man was no thug, monsieur. Well, it seems a routine underworld killing. I don't agree. For one thing, Quende always worked alone. And for another thing, no professional would kill this way. Something very odd about this case. I'd like to follow it up. Monsieur. Not on any account, Maigret. How long have you been with the police service, Inspector? Forty years, monsieur. Then I would imagine he's quite capable of dealing with the case on his own. I'd go and see the mother. Monsieur, what chance has he got single-handed? We're taking all his men. Be reasonable, Meg Megray. A dead thug. Have you read the press on these holdups? They're already saying the police can do nothing to protect public money. Two million stolen in five weeks. Armed men roaming the streets. No, you cannot be released from your present investigation. Leave it to Fumel. One thug obliterating another. I agree. Quentin was no thug. Never lied about his work. Not being a thief. 
In his own way, he was honest, proud of his skill. Look at this. Hmm. Hmm. Good face. Good With face. different luck, he could have been something. Very good face. Yes, yeah, like his mother's. A real peasant. Justine, they call her. She must be old by now. I hate to think of Fumel having to tell her. Inspector Maigret would like to know where your son was living. Did he ever write to you? I can't read. Did he ever send you anything? Money, presents? Yesterday, he sent me flowers. It was my birthday. Who brought them? Madame, the man who killed your son was cruel. We must find him and punish him with your help. Where was your son living? A boy came from a hotel. Hotel Saint-Pierre. Thank you, Justine. One pin, one chocolate wrapping. There was chocolate in the stomach. Yeah, his uh, supper. He never ate a big meal before going on a job. But what job? Well, before every job. Quente would take a room somewhere. With a view? Hmm? And then he'd watch. For weeks, if necessary, sometimes for months. Till he was ready. Then he'd go in. Always bedrooms. That's where the jewels are. Made no difference to him if there was someone asleep in the bed. He trod like a... Fumel, what was that in the lab report about a cat? White cat hairs on the trousers. Cats. <laughs> they bring on my asthma. Uh, be brave, Aristide. You have asthma. I have Judge Goudard. I'll be in my office. Jerry, for God's sake, hurry up. Do you know what time it is? We'll miss the train. Get rid of this damn cap before I wring its neck. Be Serge for the car. Yes? Madame Wilton? Yes. Inspector Fumel, 14th District. What is it, the car? I told my chauffeur not to park it. Not your car, madame. You'd better come in, Inspector. Thank you, madame. An unfortunate occurrence. We're investigating a death. A man in the hotel opposite. It appears his room is opposite the window of your bedroom. Yes. We believe his assailant visited him last night. It's possible you may have seen something. How should I know what goes on in that place? No. No, of course. If I could have a look from your window... I told you, I saw nothing. What's up? This is Mr. Gerald Wilton. Your husband? My stepson, Jerry. We are being visited by the police. It seems that a man was killed in that squalid little hotel across the street last night. And the inspector thinks that I might have witnessed the deed from my bedroom window. I told him I saw nothing. Perhaps the servant? My maid is away. She left this morning to visit her mother in the country. Oh, uh, that's unfortunate. And the address of your maid? I don't know it. It will excuse me, inspector. We have a train to catch. We're going to my country house. Oh, and where is that? Saint-Germain. Oh, you take the cat? Uh, Abdul goes everywhere with me. Forgive me. I can't resist them. <laughs> he travels well in the basket? Yes. Oh, careful, he'll cover you with his hair. Oh, yes. It's a confounded <laughs> nuisance. You know, 
If you want to know what went on across that room the opposite, Inspector, you should ask Abdul. My window is his favourite place. Oh, it, it won't be necessary. Oh, would you like to brush your coat? No, no, what are a few hairs. My apologies, madame, for troubling you. Monsieur. Oh, you could have seen into the room. He didn't. Don't panic. It's all cleaned up anyway. I feel sick. Oh, I feel sick. The car. What have you done with the car? I got rid of it. It's all right. I hope it is. Oh, God, I hope it is. Inspector Fumel, your heroism is rewarded. The same cat. The same cat. You ignored my request, Maigret. No, monsieur. I left it to Fumel. He's found you a murderer. Fumel's found me a few cat's hairs. On the strength of which you're asking for a warrant to search Madame Wilton's apartment. If I am right, monsieur, we shall find bloodstains in her bedroom, on the floor, and in the car, in Wilton's car, where I think the body was carried. You know, of course, who his father is? Yes, monsieur. Wilton, the English industrialist, ships, newspapers, oil. Three wives, all divorced. And I'm pretty certain that his third wife and his son killed Quendi. The motive being? Quendi specializes in bedroom theft. He may have seen something going on. A woman of 50 and her own stepson. Well, quite. Think what Papa would have said. If I am right, Monsieur, the son could not afford to let Quendi live with that secret. He couldn't even chance the body being recognized, so he smashed in his face. You realize that even if you are right, Wilson could never be convicted. He'd plead self-defense, panic. I know. And if you're wrong, the Wiltons could crucify you. I'll risk that. All for a dead thief. He was a man and he was murdered. I cannot give you a warrant on the evidence you've supplied. That well, leaves us the car. We'll be in some breaker's yard by now. I have to work quickly. We shall need more men, monsieur. No, not another man, not even yourself. I'll find the car. Well, it is what your chance has he got single-handed? The Quende affair is secondary at the moment. You mean, what's a dead thief to two million francs? That's right. I won't. Another hold-up. Another where? A rue Lafayette. Did they get away? Yes, but this time they left a clue. One of the gang shot. Dead? Not yet, but we better hurry. Now, perhaps you're convinced, Maigret. But I wish you. I'm sorry, Fumel, but you can see for yourself what the situation is. Thank you, nurse. How bad is he? The bullet's in the base of the spine. Can you talk to him? Mm, makes no difference. Mm. Can you hear me? Look at me. Listen, you were one of the men in the hold-up today. There were four men. You were one of them. Who were the others? Who's your leader? What's your name? You're badly hurt. We must tell your wife. He's too far gone. Have you got a wife? And children, they'll be worried about you. Your wife will want to see you, to help you. Jean. Well, that is our clue. Jeanne, he said. Fragments of copper wire, bits of plastic insulation, four colours. Traces of solar on the shoes. Traces of solar? What would he be? Radio mechanic. An electrician? Mm, must be. Mm -hmm. He'd be handicapped for fine work. Why? Cataract operation on his left eye. Ah, oh, does he say when? Oh, two years ago. Oh, that might help. Uh, central information? Eye hospitals. Oh, that should, that, they should be able to find that. Uh, hello, Jacques? Yes, Luca. Fine, how are you? Listen, we're trying to trace a radio mechanic or an electrician who had a cataract uh, operation on his left eye about two years ago. Oh, we don't know his name. No, his wife's name was Jeanne. It's her we're after. Uh, you think they should have it? Right, I'll wait. Records should have it. She's not going to be difficult to find. 
my children, my baby. What'll happen? Oh my God. Madame Brezon, your husband was one of the men in the hold-up today. The policeman shot him while he was attacking the cashier. Oh, Joseph couldn't have done that if you knew him. He was good. You knew nothing about this? No, nothing. Nothing. What time did he leave the shop this morning? Um, at ten. It must have been ten. Mm. He told me he had to see a customer. You often do this? Oh, no, not often, but now and then. He told me they were special repair jobs. He never told me where he was going. Then he'd leave me in charge of the shop. Did you make a good living? Sometimes we didn't even have enough to eat. You see, it started when he had trouble with his eyes and he couldn't do the fine work and we began to owe money and the wholesalers wanted to make us bankrupt, but then suddenly... Business started to get better, eh? How long ago was this? Well, it was about a month ago. Yes, March. It was my birthday. He bought me this. Mm. He told me he found some good customers and that things were going to be different for all of us. Different. <laughs> March, St. Clou Raid. Mm -hmm. Brunet and company. Mm. If he'd pay for it with 100 franc notes, they might have a record of them. Yeah. Did your husband have any uh, special visitors just before this time? Hmm? Did any customers come into the shop to talk to him? Uh, perhaps just after the shop had closed, huh? Do you have any special friends? He's only got one friend, René. René Lussac. Uh, where does he live? Um, 17, Rue Belmont. What does he do? He makes violins. Made one for Joseph. Mm -hmm. Joseph was very fond of music. <laughs> Oh, madame, did Lusac ever visit your house? Yes, but lately they used to go out to a cafe to play billiards. What's the name of the cafe? I don't know. Shall I uh, pick him up? No, no, he might have nothing to do with it. Follow him, find out about this cafe. It could be where the gang meets. Yeah. Don't take any chances. No. All right. Well, take you back to your children now. He was good. What he did, it was for us. Look, right. Give or take a minute. with you now. Oh, give us a drink, Rainey. What's the matter? <laughs> Don't you know your own name? <laughs> Where's your friend tonight? He'd have to be dead to miss his game. Let's go on to Jean. She doesn't know anything. Cognac. Cognac, monsieur. Silly without the sun, then. Eh? Oui, monsieur, yes. I'm getting out. Don't get your nappy wet. Quiet tonight. Usual. Oh, come on, give us a drink. Oh, shut up. No, no, no. Give the lady a drink. Here, give me another one. I'll buy you a drink, Auntie. <laughs> Auntie yourself. Oh, you're a chick. And you're a lady. You can't run out now. Papa's got your share. I'm getting my share tonight. You'll be lucky. It's eight o'clock. It should be there now. Lucky up. Where's the uh, phone? Over there, monsieur. Jeton. Uh -uh. I asked first. All right. Thanks.
Hello, Mimi. Uh, yes, yes, it's me. I, uh, I can't uh, be long because there's someone waiting to use the phone. No, no, I just thought I'd call you to tell I, um, to say I'll be late tonight. I've got to see a couple of clients. Uh, well, I'm at Porto Versailles in a cafe called, uh, hold on, uh, what's the name of this place? Café des Amis. I think. Uh, Café des Amis. Terence! In here, quick. Yes, my lord. Hold on a minute. It's Luca. He's found something. Uh, one exchange to monitor all calls from the Café des Amis, Porto Versailles. Right. How many are there? How many drinks? Oh, well, I've, uh, I've had a couple. No, 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 no more than a couple. Uh, you know yeah, I can't be long because there's someone waiting no. to use the phone, you see, sweetheart. But, well, if you're sure you know how to get here, I'll wait for you, uh, sweetheart. Message received, sweetheart. Now, you stay there, do nothing, and we'll monitor all calls you're in. <laughs> you're some girl, aren't you? Eh? <laughs> all right, then, little one, if you, uh, if you know how to get here, I'll wait, but don't be long. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> Ah, women, eh? Uh, sorry, all yours. Mind if I take a cue? All right. Help Back yourself. Feel like a drink? Yeah. Uh, cassis. Uh, cassis and a cognac. Cognac and cassis. Mama, did you get my postcard? Hmm. Who is that? Rene. What do you want? What about the chocolate? The kids are asking. Where's the call to? It's somewhere outside Paris. They're tracing it now. Chocolate? I don't know. I'll ask Papa. It's Lusac. He's heard one of the kids is sick. He's keeping the chocolate for later. He's keeping it in a safe place. I must have my share tonight. You'll get your share later. They've cut. Did you get the number? Call to Bay 3291. I'll find out where that is. Get me the call for exchange, quickly. Uh, your shot. Yeah. Cognac, monsieur. Ah, thanks. Cassis. Good luck. Santé. Our best cognac, monsieur. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't like your worst. Monsieur, please. Give it to me. Thank you, monsieur. Watch your dog. Yes, yes, Villa Rose Corbet. Yeah. Name? Bourdon, Rosalie Bourdon. Rosalie? La, la belle Rosalie. Pierre, Pierre, Pierre Sabatini. That's it, she was his woman. He's doing life in saint martin d'Auray. And who's just done ten years in the same place? Fellini. Corbet police, sergeant. The patron. Flambert's just been through. I'm afraid we've lost that paper seller. Uh, well, I'm go. about him. We are making news ourselves. Corbet. Corbet. Maigret. Inspector Maurice? Yes. I want all your men for a raid. Yes, all your men. All right, Rosalie, calm down. Come up with me here. Stinking hands off. Stinking cops. You got my man for life. Stinking murdering cops. 
You won't get me. Keep your hands up. You can't hold me. I get the love of you. You stinking rotten cops. You dirty stinking my man. My man gets out and get a Put on the raincoat, Bellini. Huh? Perhaps it wasn't a light raincoat. Thank you, monsieur. It was also quick. All right, I know. Just wait, please, monsieur. Bring Monsieur Blanchard, the cashier. That makes two witnesses who haven't seen him. Take it off again. What is the charge, Chief? You cannot keep me here without a charge. Not after 24 hours. You made the law, not me. Get up before I boot you up. Oh, so sorry. Monsieur? No, Monsieur Blanchard. Was this one of the men who attacked and robbed you? Put on the glasses, Bellini. It should really be a parade. You're taking a chance. It won't stick. Huh? I think it might be. Well, is he or isn't he? Perhaps without the glasses. Oh, certainly. Sorry, monsieur. All right, thank you, monsieur. Will you wait outside? That makes three witnesses who haven't seen me chief, Inspector. Can I go now? Bring him in. Twenty hours to go. Oh. Well, well, well. What have you got here, Inspector? What did you get besides a stick here? Nothing from them. Some of them record on steam. He just served five and a half years in Saint Martin de Rey for armed robbery. Works as a garage mechanic in Port de Versailles, same place Lusac bought his moped. Anything on the Lusac? No, nothing. What does he do? Musical instruments, makes and repairs them. Steve here recruited you when you fell behind with the payments on your moped, right? And then you pulled in your friend Raison because he was as hard up as you were. Yes? You're a fool, Isaac. You were an honest man. So was Raison. Now he's dead. Yeah. You were the two amateurs. These men dragged you in, huh? I don't know about Raison. I have an alibi. His wife. She'll tell you. I was in the shop all day in the back room working. What is the charge anyway? Shut your mouth. Fellini. Steve. Lusac. And Rezo. Your witnesses said there were four men. But you're not the whole gang, are you? There was a fifth man. The one who sat in the car. The one who hides the money for you till the heat's off. What money? Yeah. What money? We'll find it. We've got time. All the time in the world. Correction. You have just under 20 hours. <laughs> I really don't know. Maybe, maybe if he was wearing a hat. All right. <clears throat> what about that? Get your head up. Come on, get your head up. I was trying to hold a bag, you see, and one of them hit me. It was all so quick. Money, money, money. I don't know about any money. Ask Rosalie. She has money. Stinking cops. Bring you back. You, you might be a criminal yourself the way they treat you. I've got a husband to look after. 
I've got a house to clean and meals to cook. Madame Lepine, this way, please. This is her last time, too. You're in luck. It's your turn with Rosaline. We'll have to let them go within four hours if they don't break. And they won't. We can hold steam. What for? You tried to tear my ear off. I resent it. Uh, the witnesses are no good. They might as well have been in Australia. Until we find the fifth man and the money, we've got no case. They'll make it both me and Marseille by now. Uh, Bellini wouldn't chance that. Uh, it'll be somewhere near. Somewhere in Paris. Lusak is our only hope. He's the amateur. Mm. If anyone's going to break, it'll be him. Bring him in again. Let's have another talk at him. Right. Uh, why don't you uh, try and grab a bit of sleep? I can talk to Lusak. Right. Yeah. Ring me. I will. Have a look at the bars. Hello. Chief Inspector Mago's office. Inspector Fumel. Uh, no, hold on. What is it, female? I think I found the Wilton car. Wilton's car? Yes, I'm sure it is. A man came yesterday morning and sold it. <laughs> the engine number's been ground off. The chassis number, too. No number plate? No. Not one in front, either. Take a look at the front seat by the driver. That's blood, all right. Yeah, and hairs. but it's enough to put Wilton where we want him. Well done, Aristide. <laughs> Michon, uh, Georges Michon. That... <coughs> that was his name. What's yours? Lombier. You own this place? Yes, I do. And I run an honest business. Mm -hmm. If a man comes and wants rid of a car... A new car? Where's the registration book? He said he'd send it. What'd he look like? Like, oh, I don't know, just sort of ordinary looking. Mm, that's a great help. Where the number plates? Gone for scrap. I'm breaking it up for spares. A new car? Eh? Pity we shall need those number plates for identification. Do you know the number? 1354 JSM5. Uh -huh. Expect he's chucked them in that heap down there. You can't do that. Do what? Search my place. It's illegal. Look, that's my car. Look, you can't touch anything without a warrant. Look, I've paid for it. I've got a receipt. Look, you can't do anything without a court order. All right, all right. If you want it that way, I'll get a court order. Where's the phone? In the office. Michon, you said the name was? I'll ask you again. What did he look like? Hello, Palais Justice? Judge Goudard's office. What are you doing? Get out! Get out, old imbecile! Shook off the police! Wait. Look! Now get out! I come back within an hour with that intact! Go get it! We'll find him, it's urgent! I want my money! Get out! Well, if it isn't the brave soldier of France, the hero of Verdun. <laughs> He's just an old madman. He does odd jobs. Yeah, I bet he does. So you thought it was safe to come back here for your chocolate, eh? I am a soldier of France. I told you he's mad. He does odd jobs. Like lookout man for Bellini, eh? Yeah? Hmm, I expect he gets paid in beautiful 50-franc bars of chocolate. I wouldn't be surprised if you were the candy man, the missing number five. What are you talking about? You're mad. 
Fumel, forget about the number plates. I think this is where we shall find the chocolate. Come on, where is it, eh? Where do you hide it? The money from the Rue Caillot raid. Huh? The Rue Poissonnier, the Rue Lafayette. Find it! All right, we will. <coughs> now, Aristide, where would be a good place to look, eh? Somewhere that you might look at a hundred times a day and pass it over, huh? Sure. Such is an old tool bag. Chocolate. I still don't see why Fumel should get credit for both the cases. Oh, I don't know. I've got what I wanted. The man who killed Quinde. Still. Well, from Fumel's retiring in a year. This will mean promotion. And a better pension. Well, after 40 years, he deserves it. <coughs> Remember, my love, we'll all be old someday. <laughs>